Hey everyone, um, my name is Lily. Uh, I use she, they pronouns. Um, and I'm gonna be talking a little bit about um, my project, which is actually a, it's not um, what is written in the uh, uh, orientation manual. Um, <laughs> I did change it, so um, yeah, I think so following the wildfires in early February, um, I felt like my work was intersecting a lot with um, the, the response to begin with, and I'll talk, I'll get into that a bit. Um, and so I decided to kind of focus on more of this emergency response work. Um, and also the way that like the wildfires have both been depoliticized by um, certain groups and politicized by other groups. Um, okay, so here were my old research questions. Um, I, I was um, initially focusing on the um, Quintero Puchuncavi region, um, which is about an hour north of Valparaiso. Um, and there was a group, or there, there are like a few groups of um, frontline indigenous feminist organizers who were working against um, the Codelco copper plant um, in, in Quintero, and uh, they, they coin it colloquially the um, Chilean Chernobyl. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's, it's pretty bad. Um, it's poisoned the area um, pretty, pretty heavily. Um, and so I was going to focus on the um, organizing work response um, and also how that fits into the four other sacrifice zones. It's a sacrifice zone. It's basically like, it's very heavy handed. It's um, assault, like um, a way of an area in which um, the corporations are prioritized over people. I also realized I had an updated version of this that I was working on um, like during the break, so I'm kind of giving myself away, but I did have an about me slide. Um, so I'll just, <laughs> I'll um, say it really quickly. Um, so I um, have always been passionate about the environment. Um, when I was in elementary school, I my mom gave me um, Al Gore's kids version of The Inconvenient Truth. And I read it and I was telling everyone about it and it made me really popular at school. Um, <laughs> and and I, would, I was proselytizing climate change essentially. Um, but I realized pretty quickly that um, I was not a scientist nor would I ever be one. I was pretty abysmal at math. Um, so not on that side of things. Um, and we have a lot of really cool people here who are doing um, the more scientific stuff. but. Um, there was also something missing from Al Gore's book, um, and that was like people. Um, and I think like as we've kind of progressed into a better, deeper understanding of what environmental justice is, um, we've understood that it really directly affects people. Um, I remember a page in Al Gore's book. Um, it was like the Dominican Republic and Haiti um, and how the Dominican Republic had like all these trees and all these forests and Haiti was basically barren and desolate um, and the way that it portrayed um, that without context um, and without knowing the context of the Dominican Republic and Haiti, one might think that like it was the Haitian people's failure, um, which it wasn't. There's a lot of colonial history there. Um, so as I kind of got older, I was thinking more about environmental justice. Um, I am from Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, the environmental justice movement in the United States started in Warren County, North Carolina, which um, is about an hour away from my house. Um, it happened when, um, I think in the 60s or the 70s, um, a truck supplying a bunch of toxin was going to dump um, like the, the earth with, or the toxins, I guess, into a community. Um, which is a majority black community. And these people laid on um, their bodies like horizontally in the middle of the road um, to stop the truck from dumping the toxins. And then the term environmental justice was um, coined. And so yes, like um, it has to do with the intersection of the environment and justice, um, not as many big scientific terms as my peers. But um, I also, another thing, um, I have narcolepsy. This is not just a personality trait. Um, this is, this is, um, or an excuse um, for me to say, don't take it personally if I'm falling asleep during your presentation. But I, um, before I was medicated, um, I was falling asleep constantly um, during class. And my uh, teachers, this was in high school and early college, my teachers would blame it on um, me and my inability to stay awake um, as if it were a choice. And I think that really, 
brought me into the context of chronic illness um, in the way that it relates to the environment. So like I did not get narcolepsy because my um, water was polluted, um, but at the same time, like my illness, um, the way that it has been demonized in a society that um, really values um, making capital is the same, the same ideals um, as the society that dumps toxins to, um, to basically make people sick. Um, so there's a lot of illness related to environmental justice work that I think is really important um, and that a lot of times gets sidelined by um, just mass statistics. Um, and so I'm really interested in the way that it's affecting people chronically, how it makes them chronically ill. Um, I got my BA in English, which is super helpful here in Chile, um, but <laughs> I um, was working as a journalist um, for a uh, second to only the New York Times, the Charleston City paper. Um, and I, I was um, realizing how much I really liked telling people centered stories. Um, and so that kind of ties into um, not only like my new research questions, but also the way in which I am conducting the research. Um, and so I will get into that. Okay, new research questions. Um, pretty similar. Um, but instead, I'm talking more about um, the wildfires. I don't want to just like abandon um, the Quintero Punchukavi region. There's a lot to learn um, from organizing there, and also at the same time, um, a wild or a mass fire um, started outside of Codelco, um, the Chilean Chernobyl, and but they were um, pretty quick to say that it didn't pause or halt operations. So that's, I mean, everyone wins. Um, but <laughs> I, I think. Um, there is a lot of really cool organizing work being done, not only in Quintero, but also in Valpo. And my um, faculty advisor is from Vina, so it made sense for me to kind of stay in Vina. Um, yeah, I think I want to contextualize it um, within the broader movement and also the broader history of globalization. Um, we know that like a lot of the environmental justice issues that Chile is facing today um, are a direct result of um, the Pinochet regime. Um, who supplied and backed the Pinochet regime in the United States. So I don't want to just kind of come at this from a disconnected position, which is also why I tell you about my background. Like, I think it's really important to emphasize the way in which um, identity and or like past experience um, translates into the work that we do. Um, so, oh, also, again, there's a lot of really cool, um, I was reading a few articles about the mutual aid and like community-based response work um, following the wildfires, and I, I thought of um, following the um, like the peak of COVID in 2020. Um, I was involved in um, like a big mutual aid response, providing um, financial help and material help to students and workers at my school. Um, and I think the importance of community and mutual aid is so um, it's understated, but it is like the biggest way that people help each other out. And so I really want to look at that. Um, and to think about like how these things are happening in a different context after another emergency. Um, okay, so um, I'm planning on doing a research paper. Um, I think what I'm a bit more excited about, even though I have more of a background in writing, um, is my, uh, trying to do a documentary. I also have like zero experience with a camera. When I, I picked up a camera off Facebook Marketplace, and when I got there, the guy was like, oh, like how much um, documentary production experience do you have? And then he saw me try to put on the lens, and he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, you're a beginner, aren't you? Um, so I am going to spend probably the first few months not only like getting connected with people, but also like um, trying to learn how to use a camera. Um, I have done a bit of um, documentary work in the past um, with I did when I was so I studied abroad in Chile in 2022. I was in Valpo and I did a mini documentary on the Estallido Social. Um, I was using um, B roll footage provided to me by my actually faculty advisor now. Um, so I didn't have to produce any myself, but I like was really into the, um, the like specifics of trying, like taking 12 hours to figure out the nitty gritty of like Premiere Pro and like almost losing my file and <laughs> the adrenaline rush it gave me. Um, but I, I really learned, um, I think I, I learned about the importance of narrative storytelling, not only in the context of writing um, and also how important like audiovisual storytelling can be. Um, my initial um, 
proposal was one of just a podcast because I had more experience in audio production. Um, but I have decided to be more ambitious and we'll see what happens. Um, and I think that the visual component can be really interesting um, as, as well as the audio component. I think audio is often understated um, in an audio visual production. Like they say 90% of it is um, the this, this spoken, the spoken language. Um, and also I guess that kind of goes back to this idea that like a lot of um, indigenous groups really prioritize oral spoken language and English as a colonizer language um, and Spanish as well are very much prioritizing the written word. Um, and I think as an English major, like I love the written word, that's what I do, but um, there's so much to be said for um, the spoken word and how things have been passed down orally and how things are in danger of being lost as well um, because we want to write everything down um, and language isn't seen as as capable or as smart or as academic if it isn't um, in writing. Uh, so yeah, I guess I also would like to um, decenter myself with obviously like in the documentary, um, but as much as possible, like, you know, I'm bringing my own perspective into um, like behind the camera. So, and there's no way to completely divorce myself from that, nor would I want to. Um, so I don't know. I'm, I have some connections that I made in Valpo when I was there last time. Um, I went to the director of Amnesty International's house and he thought, I think he thought I was like some um, professional, like not actually doing this for a student project because when he welcomed me in, he was like, oh, like, where's your crew? And <laughs> I was like, no, it's just me. Um, and he like, it's like, okay, do you want tea, coffee, anything? <laughs> like, no, I don't know. I mean, we can just get started. And he like looked at my phone and was like, oh, you're going to film me on that. Okay. Um, <laughs> but I, so I do have like some connections with um, folks in Santiago in, um, in different parts of Chile. And I also travel to Arica, to Putre. Um, and so would be interested in kind of thinking about those and also the way that like the sacrifice zones there have played a part in this. I know this is a bit all over the place. It reflects the stage that I'm in right now. Um, I don't really, I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing and that's what my months one through three will be about. Um, so here's my community partners. That is supposed to have an extra O. Um, but in the updated version did, <laughs> but <laughs> that's okay. You can see my rough draft, my progress. Um, and uh, so Professor Yesenia, uh, Yesenia Allegra Docente, uh, she was my study abroad advisor. She's really cool. Um, she engages in a lot of interdisciplinary work um, and really helped me make my documentary and like comforted me after my, I almost lost my project at four in the morning. Um, so I have a lot of trust in her <laughs> and her experience. And then also Coordinadora Ultra de Marzo, that's March 8th, International Women's Day. Um, it's a really big deal in Chile tomorrow. Um, and it is also the group of organizers surrounding that are really, um, are really interested in, in kind of the intersectional organizing that um, it has come after the wildfires. Like they've, they've had a response to it and I think there's a lot of intersectionality there in Chile. Um, no mas zonas de sacrificios, um, like no more sacrifice zones. Um, they also had a response after the wildfires, I think ties into the idea the fires might, may have been intentionally lit. That's another thing, climate change um, playing a role in it, et cetera. Um, okay, here's my timeline. Um, yeah, I guess, so these are like very ambitious secondary locations. I have no idea if I'll be able to get to all of them, but I would like to at least go to Quintero and obviously I'm here in Santiago, so that checks one off. Um, and my first three months, um, I will add like learning how to use a DSLR, but um, building connections and partnerships with um, the people in Valparaiso um, who are doing this work. Um, I don't really wanna get started on my film my filming um, until like a bit later. Like I feel like it would be pretty, um, like insensitive isn't even the right word to like go up to someone and be like, hey, you just experienced trauma, like can I film you? Um, so I'm really trying to understand the position that I take in that like people have really undergone a really severe emergency and like for an outsider to come in and be like, I wanna, I wanna talk about this, I wanna document it, um, can be really jarring. So I think there's a way in which I need to be very intentional about this. Um, and I, um, my professor has allowed me to audit classes around like environmental justice at the university. 
um, months three through six, that's probably when I'll be more doing my, my research, compiling segments, writing the paper, and then finishing the documentary in months six through nine, hopefully. Um, and then considerations, I've talked a little bit about these, but I think it's important to just kind of reiterate. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm an outsider. I'm coming in and talking about um, a emergency response narrative. Um, I think that's what my documentary will be about. Again, I'm not sure. Um, I think there are a lot of different angles you could take on the wildfires, um, and there's so much to unpack there that like, I don't have time to get into in this presentation. Um, but yeah, um, I, I need to interrogate what's happening behind the camera as well. Um, yeah, I'm a white US citizen with an American passport. I hold a lot of power. An American passport gives me a lot of power. Um, I'm coming as a part of a Fulbright, which is really cool, and I'm really humbled, and also that gives me a lot of power. Um, and the role of globalization um, and neoliberalism, these are, I mean, a lot of people are talking about the logging industry, um, the lithium, the copper industry, right? Like, okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll hurry up. Um, I did want to say one thing about the, the role of industry in all of this. So my initial project was going to be focusing on kind of the, the um, tensions between, um, like kind of Eric was talking about, like the, the need for clean energy and then also the way that like, it has been weaponized against um, indigenous people in Chile, um, the lithium triangle in Chile, Bol Bolivia, and Peru um, in the Atacama region. Um, and Chile is one of the largest copper mining, copper producers in the world. Um, and then we have the forestry industry, which is to blame for a lot of the wildfires and the um, chopping down of native species and um, planting non-native, more flammable plants, um, and the way that different communities have been prioritized differently in crisis response. So all of these things come together and they're important considerations. And also like I, with the United States comes a lot of baggage um, because of the United States role in all of this as well. Um, yeah, telling a story versus exploiting a trauma, I think I got into that. Really wanna like think about what I can give as well. So I'm gonna be spending a few weeks for sure trying to volunteer with like crisis response um, to the fires and trying to get to know folks who are involved in that. So yeah, any questions? <laughs> I guess if we have time. <laughs>